Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your finished rigged character for rendering. So by now, your character should be properly rigged so that when you move the controllers, the character should behave accordingly. Your materials, everything adjusted. Next, you need to set up your lighting. And once you are done with that, you are ready to render. So, but first, you need to set up your character in a pose for animation, for slight resting animation. So I'm going to put this character in a combat pose. So just move the controllers until you get a suitable pose. I already pre-adjusted the fingers to form a fist so that he will be in a fist fight stance. So plan your pose. If possible, please check out references on what kind of poses you can use for your character. Okay, so now I position the pose that I like. Just adjust some of his stance. Okay, so if you rigged everything properly, if you select the main controller, okay, the whole rig should turn around. Okay, next you need to set up your lighting, so do a normal three-point lighting. So go ahead and create your lights. I'm going to create spotlight. Turn on, press number seven, so that you can activate the lighting in the viewport. And select the lights, and then click on panels, look through selected, so that you're viewing what the light is seeing. So zoom out the lights until you illuminate your character. In your outliner, you can see we only have one light source now. You can press Ctrl D or Shift D to duplicate another light. Select the second light and using the same option, look through selected to adjust the lighting. Okay, press Ctrl D again. So now I've got three spotlights and use the same function again to adjust the lights. Okay, gonna select number three and position it. Okay, now you can switch back to perspective view. Okay, make sure that your three lights are in position. Okay, it appears that two and three are in still in the same position. So I'm gonna use the look through selected again to readjust. Okay, now the lights are evenly distributed. Okay, it will take you a while if you want to do a proper lighting to get a proper lighting effect. Now, if you want shadows to be cast on a surface, you need to create a surface. So I'm going to create a simple polyplane with only one division. Scale it up. So with a polyplane surface, you bet you are better able to see the ground. Okay. But if you do not want to see the edges looking like this, you give it a little bit of subdivisions and select one of the edges, move it up to form a background. Okay, press number three to subdivide this. So you can create this curved background. So this is entirely up to you. Of course, you can adjust the lights right to give a much better effect. Pressing Control A now to adjust the the angle and then the fall offs.
Okay, so now I'm right going to increase the size of this plane so it covers the entire background. Okay, next you want to create a camera. So go ahead and create a camera. Just an ordinary camera and then go ahead and look through the camera. Click on panels, perspective and click on camera. Looking through the camera, position it until you fill it the frame. Okay, make sure in the selected camera you turn on the save action. Okay, ensure that the character is within the frame. Okay, so once you have done that, you can set the number of frames for rendering. Um, I'll suggest you set the number of frames of rendering to 250 frames. So go to the timeline and adjust the maximum number to 250. In your animation settings under your preferences, so go to Windows and Preferences. Go under the settings. Change the time frame rate to PAL 25 frames per second. And save this. Now if you have done it, you notice that the frame number might change. So manually change the timeline to 250 again. Change everything first frame and the last frame to 250. Okay, so this will play at a proper 200 and or rather 25 frames per second. Okay, so now we want to set the animation. So we want to create an animation where the character is, for example, in a ready stance. We want to create an animation where he's like moving up and down like that. Okay, so like ready to go into the fight. Okay, this is really depending on your character and what kind of pose you want your character to do. So what I did is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the controllers of the wrist plus the hip controller all together at the same time. And then I'm going to move my mouse so that he's doing this very slight motion. Okay, so I'm going to set the first keyframe with all these controllers selected. Okay, go and choose the highlight all the translate in the XYZ right mouse click on it and then click on key selected and right at the bottom of the timeline I want you to turn on auto key which is this button here so that whatever changes you do uh, it will register as a change so with three controllers still selected you want to scrub off okay about 50 frames ahead in time there is a that will give about uh, two seconds so in two seconds I want him to move forward slightly and then move down a little bit okay then I'm gonna move to 100 frames okay and then I want him to go up again and then maybe move slightly to his right you can scrub the timeline to see what kind of motion he's doing and again I'm gonna move forward another the 50 frames okay let me just study the motion first he moves forward moves up Okay, then I want him to come back down again at frame 150. Okay, back a little bit, push back in the z-axis, and move back up again. And I want the first keyframes and the last keyframes to be the same. Okay, so to do that, go ahead and left mouse click on your timeline to frame one. Hold down to the shift key left mouse click and drag until you see this um, red color highlight over the keyframe the keyframe itself will change into this yellow to indicate that it's been selected okay you can right mouse click and copy and then go over to 250 frame 250 right mouse click again and paste okay so you paste over the keyframes for all the selected elements so your first keyframe should end the same. So right now, I have him moving up and down. Okay, so I do not want the, if I, you want to give it a little bit more realism, you do not want the hands and the hips, right, to move exactly together. So you want to offset them a little bit. So this is where you open up your animation editor, graph editor. 
Okay, and then you can see the XYZ transforms. Press F to fill them up. So you can try to offset them by grabbing all the keyframes here in the middle. Or you can grab all the keyframes and then either move them left, right, up or down. So I just got to offset them a little. So I'm going to move for this is the right hand controller. I'm just going to press W and then maybe move them slightly to the left. And maybe go up slightly. So that the body motion will not be moving together with the hands. If you notice right now, the hand controller is not moving exactly with the hip. Whereas the hip for the left hand controller is still moving exactly the same pace. So I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand controller. Select it. Open up your graph editor. I'm going to grab only the central vertices or rather central keyframes here. Then I'm maybe just going to move them down and right a little bit. The first and ending keyframes, I'm going to leave it the same. So right now you can see there's some offset. So the hands are not moving exactly to the hip. So this will give it a little bit more realism. <laughs> okay, another animation I want to give him is a bit of breathing, um, breathing animation. I'm going to switch over to perspective view so it will not affect the camera position you can grab the the central spine bone here or you can grab these two clavicle bones because they are affecting the chest area here and then you can try to scale them so you notice when I scale the chest expands ever so slightly or you can try using this central bone and play with the scale but unfortunately if you do that you will change the height of your character so I'm going to choose the two clavicle bones here and then you can scale it ever so slightly so you can give a sim uh, almost a simulation of him breathing. So I already set one keyframe because my I'm going to set one keyframe for the scale for these uh, two bones. Right mouse click, select and then scale this. I'm going to change this back to 1. Okay, so make sure you set the first key frames. Now select both the bones at the same time. Now for the breathing, I do not want him to breathe like every two seconds. So possibly I'm just gonna let him breathe like every. Mm, let's see. Okay, maybe every three seconds. So that will be about seventy-five. So I'm gonna scale him slightly up. Okay, please make sure you do not scale too much otherwise you notice the child bones will scale up as well just, just scale up slightly a little bit okay I'm just gonna then scale this thing back to one again scale up slightly and finally, scale it back with one to get. Okay, this is actually not necessary. This is just to give your animation a little bit of realism. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to the camera view. And there's one more thing we need to animate there is to make the character turn around. So select the main controller. And we're going to set a keyframe in the rotation. So go to the rotate. In this case, my rotation is the Y axis. So I'm going to set a rotate key. Right mouse click and key. And then scroll to the last keyframe. Change the value to 360 so that it will start to rotate. Now if you want to rotate the other direction, just enter a negative value instead. With the graph editor open and with the main controller selected, you can see the graph uh, shown to you. Okay, Right now, it gives you a default, gradually increasing the speed, constant speed and gradually slowing down. We do not want this characteristic. We want it to be a constant rotation speed. So click on this icon here to change the curve into a linear curve 
so the rotation speed is constant okay so once you've done that you notice that your character is rotating at a much constant speed okay at this stage you can continue to adjust your lighting until you get a proper lighting you can do test renders to make sure everything looks okay and you need to save three versions of the files in order to render the wireframes and the beauty pass and the gray shaded pass in order for you to composite in artifacts now um, one tip to take note of is when you are rendering or rather when you're rendering the wireframe okay please make sure that you are using the direct X setting for showing the wireframe okay it is actually much better than the OpenGL uh, rendering because you can see the wireframe doesn't the wireframes that are behind doesn't cut through the mesh so where do you get this setting go to Windows go to settings and preferences preferences under the display option okay under the display option make sure you change your rendering engine under the viewport tool to from OpenGL to direct X11 and the default viewport change it to viewport 2 and then go ahead and hit save so once you've done that you notice the wireframes will be much better now you're required to do a restart once you change that viewport so uh, for your computers you need to do this every time before you do your rendering of wireframes okay now you guys already know how to change the wireframes colors so I will not go through that so essentially this is how you set up for your rendering and adjust the animation.